Draper Scott buried an atmosphere of sadness and irony. Draper Scott. This face had a beard. Emily. Emily. Yes, Daddy. Come here, please. Something I have to tell you. What is it, Daddy? I'm just in the middle of the piece. Kirk's listening. It's important. Well, all right. Uh, I hope he liked it. It used to be our song. I want you to listen to what I have to say with an open mind. Okay, I'm all ears. It's about... Uh, Daddy! Daddy, what's wrong? Uh, oh, God. Oh, no, no. And China. Oh, oh. Lord, Molly! Molly, come quickly! Okay. He's, he's, he's having a heart attack. Oh, I'll get some water. <laughs> Considering that you took off from the Cavanaugh's without telling anybody where you'd gone, is that any way to I'm try and get sorry. rid of your friends? I'm sorry, I didn't huh? tell anybody. Okay, don't let it happen again. Uh, I saw Mike this morning. He told me you were here, and I told him I'd like to come by. Hope I'm not interrupting anything. Sit down. Thank you. Listen, what are you doing out here at this time of day anyway? Shouldn't you be at work, uh, district attorney? Well, I probably should. What's the point of being boss if you can't delegate a little responsibility and goof off? Yeah. Well, see how you were doing. Really was sweet of you, and I. I really do appreciate it. Good. <clears throat> so, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, um, do you really want to know? Mm, not so good. Sorry to hear that. Logan, I just don't know what to do with myself. I woke up this morning and I looked out the window and... definitely was spring. But I feel as, as if I'm in the middle of a very long, cold winter. Well, it is the time of year for new beginnings. I was very happy with my old life. I wasn't ready to embark on a new one, not without Draper. Yeah, I know. Hey, listen, I'm, I'm really sorry. I know that self-pity isn't going to make anything easier. Oh, you're entitled. For a little while, anyway. It won't last long. Time heals all wounds, huh? That's what they say. Yeah, they. Who are they? <sighs> Yeah, I think I'd better go out and come in again. You know, I'm not here to sell you a bill of goods. I just thought maybe we could cheer each other yeah, up. Yeah, uh, let's talk about uh, the weather. <laughs> We've talked about that. But these flowers, are I've never seen daffodils like this. Oh, well, <laughs> look, we'll talk about Julia. That's it. Okay. I was telling Jamie about her the other day. I said, this is one gorgeous chick. He says, don't come home without <laughs> her phone number. How is she? She's wonderful. Yeah. I spoke to the hospital this morning, and they said... Uh, the way she's gaining weight, by the time they let me take her home, she'll be absolutely chubby. Oh, that's great. I have to stop by and see her. I will say hello for you myself this that's afternoon. Great. I'm going over there for no other reason than to remind the poor kid that she does really have a mother. Oh, yes, she does. One she can be proud of, too. Not like poor little Jamie. Jamie happens to have one terrific father. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, just sort of for your information, I don't... I thought you might be interested to know. I'm going to start adoption proceedings for Jamie again. Well, it's about time. I'm glad to hear it. Well, I'm glad you feel that way. Tell Raven about that. Oh, yeah, Raven. She um, could turn these adoption procedures into a pretty messy affair, couldn't she? Very messy indeed. Probably going to have to fight her every step of the way. But it'd be worth it if I get custody of Jamie. Logan, uh, since you don't have any legal claim, and despite the fact that... Raven has been a rotten mother. She can make it real tough on you. Yeah. I was talking about that just uh, before I came over here with Mike and Geraldine. The good news is it looks like I'm going to be able to prove that I am his father. Oh? Uh, well, that's going to open up a whole other can of worms. Oh, yeah. Certainly will. Geraldine's with me on this. She agrees. We have to protect his future. So she's behind me all the way. What about you? What about... Won't this uh, hurt your reputation professionally? Take that chance. Jamie's worth it. Yeah. 
Besides, the way Raven's been acting recently, I just want to get this done as soon as possible for Jamie's own good. I haven't done much good for Jamie lately. What? Well, I, I mean, my leaving uh, Nicole's house means that Mrs. Goodman will have to go back and take care of Adam. What about Jamie? Oh, don't you worry about that. You're not causing anybody any inconvenience. Geraldine's already hired a new nanny. She's taking over right now. It should solve our problem permanently. Yeah, she'll be there today. Oh, that's good. Yeah. What do you say we get some water? They look thirsty to me. <laughs> Coming, coming. Uh-huh, Mrs. Bates, I presume. Come on in. Thank you. And it's Miss Bates, but you can call me Rosalind. Oh, yeah? Look, Roz, you're about a half hour late. Well, I had some things to take care of. Now, look, Mrs. Saxon has to be out of here bright and early. She's not going to be able to wait around for you to take care of things. I'm sure Mrs. Saxon and I will get along famously. Uh, have a seat. So, how many of your own you got? Kids, I mean. I never married. Oh, what a shame. I'm a grandmother myself three times over. You do like kids, don't you? They're a living. Do much of this kind of work before? Only when necessary. What kind of place you work in before this, a disco? I beg your pardon? Well, I mean, with the outfits you got, it's not what your basic babysitter wears to clean, to feed, and diaper. <sighs> I wear what I like. I didn't see any reason to dress down for the occasion. You know, uh, it's a pretty terrific little boy you got to take care of there. Well, the agency assured me that Johnny was well behaved. Oh, it's Jamie. Uh, look, I'm sorry I can't stay to show you the ropes, but I have another little boy to take care of, Adam Cavanaugh. But I did uh, write down a few of the do's and don'ts. Uh, if you don't mind, Mrs. Goodman, I'd like to meet the young man before I take any instructions. Oh! sure by all means come on right with me he's in here but uh, keep your arms down to your side Roz why does he bite no but if Jamie sees all that jewelry he might mistake you for a jungle gym after you uh, can I get you anything else no thank you you know I'm not at all happy about this I told you not to order that apple pie. It looked terrible. You know very well what I'm talking about. It's your plan I'm going to find out. You got a better idea? Yes. Let's forget the whole thing and go home. No. I am going to get my baby back with or without you. I don't know why I let you talk me into this. I'm just trying to help a friend. A friend is asking too much. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way, Elliot, because I don't... If I can't be friends with you, we certainly can't be lovers. You know what this is, Raven? This is sexual blackmail. <laughs> You're so perceptive. While it's true that I may not know how I wish to spend the rest of my life, doing time in prison for kidnapping is not one of the possibilities I like. It is perfectly legal. I have a foolproof plan. Do you know what my horoscope said about foolproof plans? It's going to be like taking candy from a baby. You are going to have no trouble getting my little boy from Mrs. Goodman. Well, that remains to be seen. Elliot, all you have to do is turn on your famous sex appeal, and Mrs. Goodman doesn't have a chance. Look, Raven, I realize that I may have, on occasion, taken up with a slightly older woman. Or two. But this does not mean that I make a habit... Elliot, you're going to love it, and you know it. I'm developing a severe headache. <laughs> Look, I'm not asking you to have an affair with the old frump. Oh, thank you I very much. I just want you to provide her with a diversion. I do taste doing your dirty work. Well, I'll make it up to you, I promise. And then some. You drive a very hard bargain. I knew I would make you an offer you couldn't refuse. The inscription on my tombstone will read, You did it all for love. <laughs> Well, I'm doing it for love, too. All you have to do is clear out that room so I can go in there and take my son where he belongs, to a loving mother. Logan, maybe what Raven really wants is you. You're kidding. No, no, no. I mean, isn't it possible that uh, Raven might be trying to, uh, I don't know, renew your marriage? Hardly likely. But come on, it certainly would explain her motivation for trying to get Jamie back. I'm sorry I don't follow you on that one. 
All right, uh, let me put it this way. Um, Raven has to be well aware of the fact that to, uh, well, to effect a reconciliation with you would not be easy, easy. Uh, considering her antics. Impossible would be a better word. Well, there you go. You'd need a very strong lure to reel you back in. You think she's trying to set up Jamie as bait exactly, for me? Exactly, exactly. She knows that Jamie is your world, and if Raven has custody of Jamie, then it puts her in a very strong bargaining position. No, no, no. Trying to take Jamie away from me, that's one hell of a way to kiss and make up. Come on, Logan. You know Raven better than anyone. If she has finally realized that walking out on you is a mistake, she'd be the last person in the world to come crawling back. I can't believe that. I don't think she'd want to come back. Not that I'd let her. I wouldn't. All right, forget it. I was just trying to find a, an explanation for her behavior. Raven walked out because of her shortcomings, not because of mine. Elliot. Elliot, and who knows how many others. Raven's not going to change. She is incapable of being faithful to one man. She never should have married. Kevin, me, anyone. God knows she shouldn't have been a mother. All right, then why the sudden desire to get Jamie back? No, it's not motherly love, I'll tell you that. I don't know, Logan. I really don't. Uh, now that I'm a mother, I... Well, I don't know. Look, you can never really understand someone's feelings, especially when you're talking about love. You've got to agree with me there. <laughs> I guess I do. Love never seems to make any sense. I sure couldn't tell you why I fell in love with Raven. Well, I don't think I could tell you exactly why I fell in love with Draper, but I could tell you when. Oh, yeah? Must have been in the first five minutes after I met him. Hello? Yep, it was at the Claremont Hospital, and um, it was a visiting room. Okay. I could even tell you what I was wearing. What? My blue nightgown. Yeah, I was a patient, and Draper was sitting there reading a baby magazine. That's all there was. Oh, boy, maybe I shouldn't talk about things like that. I'm sorry. Don't you dare apologize. Well, it's just that what Draper and I had is well, something I, I, I can't describe in words. You were lucky. You were very lucky. You two had what it's supposed to be all about. I loved him more than anything in the whole wide world. He was... He was the most important part of my life. I know that. Now that he's gone, that part of my life is gone. Part of me... Part of me feels dead. Don't talk that way. Don't even think that way. Life is too important. Logan, I just don't know right now how I'm going to go on without him. Maybe not. You'll do it. You have to. I can't give up. Why? Because you can't. Because there are reasons for things. And you, you're a part of so many lives. Your friends, your your brothers, your daughters. We, you got a purpose. We all have. You've got things to do, and you can't leave till you do them. That's all. Even when you don't understand. It's hard. It's very hard, but that's just the way life is. Rosalind's going to take a little rest now, Johnny, so you just be quiet, all right? Oh, Roz, honey, you have got yourself one sweet setup here. If there's one thing I hate, it's being interrupted while I'm working. This is Goodman, I presume? You presume wrong. Oh, the, this is the Saxon residence, isn't it? Yes, but Mrs. Goodman doesn't work here anymore. I see. So you're entrusted with the little fellow's care, huh? And who might you be? Oh, forgive me. My name is uh, Edward. Well, Edward, why don't you come in? Thank you. <clears throat> I, uh, I've taken over from Mrs. Goodman. Perhaps there's something I can help you with. Yes, uh, you see, I'm in town on business from Baltimore. Mrs. Goodman is a friend of a friend, and uh, as I know no one in Monticello, uh, it was suggested that uh, we have some coffee together. Too bad for Mrs. Goodman. Ah, that is a lovely outfit you're wearing. Kind of you to notice. You know, uh, when I think of baby nurses, I conjure up images of uh, silver-haired women... <laughs> Never such a person as yourself. You're not so bad yourself. <laughs> I kind of you to know. 
Listen, Edward, uh, just because Mrs. Goodman isn't here is no reason for you to be deprived of your coffee. I'll call down to room service and have some sent up. I'd like that, but I do have a meeting, and if the service in this hotel is like in most hotels, I'll never get there on time. I understand. Just when I thought Mrs. Goodman's loss might be my gain. Well, I tell you what, why don't we uh, pop down to the coffee shop? I can't do that. I've got a baby to look after in there. Or can't the baby take care of himself for 10 minutes? That would be terribly irresponsible of me. <laughs> Besides, it's my first day on the job. Or can't you convince him to take a nap? <laughs> Forget it. Look, I'd be glad to call down to the coffee shop, but that's it. Well, give me credit for trying. I sort of thought it could be the beginning of a uh, beautiful friendship. Oh, uh, wait, uh, just a second. Um, he usually goes to bed right after supper. Mrs. Goodman says he always sleeps soundly after he eats. And what time would that be? 5.30. Ah, the cocktail hour. The sun is over the yard arm. What? That means that we could meet at the hotel bar instead of the oh. coffee shop. Okay, now, I, I can't stay long. Fifteen minutes, that's all I could stay. Fifteen minutes is more than enough. We can get acquainted and, uh... Make other arrangements. Yeah. Okay. See you at 5.30. Edward, how did you know the baby was a he? Oh, I always use the uh, masculine pronoun, you see. <laughs> I'm a male chauvinist. Great. I hardly meet any of them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Won't you please let me call the doctor and have him look at you? There's no need, Molly. Daddy, you must have been in terrible pain. <clears throat> I'm much better, Emily. And uh, believe me. Uh, maybe Molly and I should take you to the hospital, just to be sure. Let the doctors worry about sick people. All I have to do is take my medication and rest. Oh, Daddy, you had me so scared. Oh, come on now. Wipe that worried look off the pretty face of yours. Your dad is fine. Are you sure? Say, who's the doctor in this family? If you had a patient who took care of himself as poorly as you did, you'd be giving him a lecture right now. I had an angina attack, and it's over. Until the next one. Daddy, it's not hard to see that, that these attacks are getting worse and worse. Emily is right. Well, now, if I'm not concerned, why should you be? But what did Dr. Finch say? That is why you went to Chicago to see him. Dr. Finch told me exactly what to do, to... Take my medication and, and rest and not to worry. But, Daddy, I can't help it. I love you. And I love you, Emily. And it hurts me to see you this upset. I don't know what I'd do if anything happened to you. Now, I, I don't want to hear you say things like that. Now, I want you to go about your business and, and just forget about such nonsense. But I want you to be well. I need you to be well. Emily. Especially now, Daddy. Daddy, I never thought that I'd have another chance to be happy again. And I'm not going to apologize for being selfish because I want to be near the two men I love, both you and Kirk. I know how much it means to you. And please, Daddy, don't drive him out of my life a second time. Please. There's no need for tears, Emily. But Daddy, I'm so frightened. Everything will work out for the best, I promise you. No, it won't. I know it. Well, how can you say that? Because nothing ever works out the way I want it to, never. I know you've had certain disappointments. Just when I start to feel good about my life, something happens to ruin it. Emily, I wish you wouldn't feel sorry for yourself. Daddy, I don't want to feel self-pity. I want to feel happy. There's nothing we can do to, to change the past. I know, but what about the future? Daddy, I, I'm just so confused right now. See, for the first time in my life, I'm really looking forward to the future. And at the same time, I'm, I'm dreading it. You shouldn't feel that way. But now that Kirk is back, I just don't want anything to go wrong. I know how you've gotten your hopes up. Daddy, I know that he doesn't remember anything about the past or any of the times he spent with me. 
But it, it doesn't matter to me. Because he loved me then, and I know he'll love me now. If there was anything I could do to protect you, to ensure your happiness, I would do it in a minute. Daddy, I know if I ever lost Kirk again, I, I never could be happy. Say, it's uh, getting a bit chilly in here, don't you think? I suppose so. There. Isn't that better? Watch our heart. 